Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video is a quick look at the newest lava effects I've been working on. If you've been following me on the channel, uh, I've been working on this LED lighting for this cliff project, put some lights inside an entrance, and the customer added, um, you know, partway through in the discussion, some lava flows over um, sections of the cliff. So, my idea was to also light the lava, um, and that was what the LED work has, has been incorporating. But at this stage, um, the last experimental phase is to develop the actual lava itself, and, you, know, uh, uh, you know, to sculpt it, cast it, um, and then um, have the light coming through it. So I've already had a lot of suggestions from people on this, a lot of great ideas for diffusing light. Um, so that I feel good about, the actual mounting, but um, the actual sculpting of the lava really is the last experimental stage of this entire process before I can really dive into finishing this, this project. We're actually really starting a lot of the foam carving in that. So. What I'd like to do is show you the um, lava that I've sculpted, um, talk a little bit about the cast that I did and how I've painted it, and, um, and also get a little feedback uh, from you on that. So uh, let's take a look. So what you're looking at here is the master, and I sculpted this in a hard clay. I actually had a visit from Smooth On, hey, you know, and uh, they um, were interested in what I was doing with all of their products and came by. When they visited, they offered, um, you know, some suggestions on things that I could use for this particular project. I was asking them about my lava uh, project. So this is a relatively hard uh, clay, and um, if people are interested, I can um, do a review of some of the products that they mentioned and that I've purchased as a result. Um, so, you know, leave that in the comments or whatever. But um, this is an interesting clay in that I sculpted it. Now, really with um, some very low profile, not heavy undercut. Don't mind the aluminum foil that got stuck in there. Um, but, uh, you know, so this actually is not a, a very difficult piece to mold. But what I was really surprised at is when I demolded it, it came out perfect, which was kind of cool. So even though it's in clay, I still have the master if I wanted to make another mold, which I probably, well, we'll see, I may need to. Um, when I, this is not really the project, but, you know, give you a sense. Um, when I made the mold, um, first I mixed up a little too much uh, silicone. That I should have had something else really to, to cast, not waste it. But um, I didn't vacuum degas it. Um, the uh, rubber says you don't really need to, and I was kind of rushing it. There you go. You can see um, I picked up actually quite a few bubbles in this. Um, but I decided, you know, really I'm at the experimental phase. I might not even like this texture for the lava, so I decided to cast it up. The casting material that I chose, I have two types of uh, paint jobs on this, uh, was supposed to be um, Vitaflex 20. Now Vitaflex 20 is actually clear, and you're saying to yourself, how come that's not clear? Uh, because I accidentally ordered Vitaflex 10. <laughs> You know, one above, one below in the buttons. How did I miss that? I don't know. So, um, in any case, I decided to use this uh, rubber in any case to do the practice casts. And um, it's a little bit softer than the Vitaflex 20. Um, and it's obviously not uh, perfectly clear. But I thought if it was a light enough color, I might still be able to push some light through it and get a sense of what the effect um, looks like. Now, looking at this, before we actually talk about this, I feel like I should show you a couple photos that I've been looking at on uh, lava to try to give you an idea of, of what I exactly am trying to emulate. So let's take a look at those photos now. So looking at those photos, you can see that um, there's quite a bit of, of cooled lava on the top, but it can vary a bit in, um, you know, its density. And, you know, in one of the uh, photos, you know, it really looked like it had a very, you know, heavy coating of cooled magma on the top. So when I painted this one, this was, I actually made a single cast, then I cut it in half so I could do two different effects. Uh, when I painted this one, um, and the gloss I, I can knock down, so you have to ignore that uh, for a second, but um, it, it really looked too subdued, too, too much black. And while, I'm, you know, that may even be realistic, um, it doesn't look 
right for what people expect to see. And I was a little disappointed. I didn't spray, um, I airbrushed um, all of these colors except the black. And I didn't airbrush enough orange and in an angle that it would show after painting it black. So I didn't really like that, so I decided to try a second version. So this version, you can see I tried to retain um, quite a bit more of the orange and reds, and then went in and um, painted the cooled magma areas in a more uneven pattern to preserve some of these open spots. One of the nice things about this texture is that, um, let me give you a little close-up of that. You can see how that, that's got some nice little raised areas. And these raised areas, you know, I had intended to paint black, but then I realized if I don't paint those black, they pick up some of those reds and uh, oranges. Really nice, and it gives it its own little variation in uh, temperature. And uh, that looked pretty good. So I'm feeling pretty good about that color scheme. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm always open to suggestions, and certainly from the customer especially. So then the next step was to try to put it on, over the lights and see what kind of an effect that produced. So, move this for a second. Hope I don't pull in any wires. I have my admittedly janky lighting set up here. Of course, I'm still running off of the breadboard and I haven't gotten any shrink tubing, although somebody watching my videos said I could get shrink tubing at an automotive store, so I gotta go check that out. But um, this gives me a chance to see the um, two... Oh, am I turned on? I'm not. There we go. Let's try that again. Um, my two... Uh-oh. Uh, look, see, I... Wait a minute, I was gonna have to edit that out, but I think I can save it with the insert, there we go, with the insertion of the ground wire, which isn't staying in, stay in. There we go. So if you recall, I wanted to put in um, different colors to pulse so that it would appear, you know, different spots of the lava would be um, getting different colors. So I went with um, whites and then um, a yellow and then a uh, red, which you'll see a transition to in a second. So that's been um, actually um, kind of a nice experiment to see. So there you see the uh, full three colors. This one does white twice and then yellow once, and this one cycles through the three colors. There's reasons for that. I'm not going to explain it. It's the best I can do at this time. I don't plan on changing it. But um, if I now, we'll see how this picks up in the camera. There we go. Hopefully, okay. Now, so this is a little exaggerated because I have it right on top of the bulb. So this gives us a sense of how some of those colors coming through really affect the overall look of the paint job. So here's the yellow, which I think looks pretty good. That's a really nice color. Now here's the red. Whoops, we'll tilt it a little bit there. And that's kind of nice, but it's a little bit dark. Uh, I'm not really sure if I like that. Now here's the white. And I definitely don't like that. Um, that is far too bright white. Now, of course, you know, if it's held off a little bit, it might look better. Oh, why are we popping? Okay, I don't know. Um, but the yellow really captures, I think, some of the effect that I'm looking for. So what I might do is, why is it doing that? I don't know. All right, coding issues. We'll work on that later. But um, now, see, the red is not too bad when I step it back a bit. So I'm thinking at this point I might need to shift those uh, colors from a brighter yellow to a more orangey red and use those as the foundation for the color. But I won't know that really well until I um, have uh, the um, transparent rubber, which I am going to order now after looking at this. I'd like to have, well, I don't know, more light coming through. Maybe I don't need more light. Um, so maybe I can use this rubber. I'm going to think about that a little bit. Um, be nice not to have to order more. Um, but of course the major experiment was to um, look at the texture, paint that, see how that came out, and then get a little sense of how the lighting will look coming through it. Um, so in any case, that gives you a sense of where I'm at. I feel pretty good about this texture, actually. Um, it, it, took me, uh, it took me a couple hours, actually, to make the master and just trying out different kinds of textures and, and techniques to achieve that, um, as I didn't really want to go in with sculpting tools and try to, you know, do uh, you know, six hours of sculpting. Um, so in the end, some uh, aluminum foil helped me out and uh, gave it a nice random pattern with a little, you know, careful eye on my part 
and uh, gives me some real options to um, paint this. One thing I thought was kind of interesting, last thing before we leave, I meant to keep this short, and you know me, I never can, is that, um, boy, doesn't that look different? It's the same black, same intensity, but I knocked this down with Army Painter, Anti-Shine, and that really um, takes that down a notch and looks, I think, much more Magna-like. But, Magma, not Magna. In any case, um, what I realize is that um, I could shift the amount of black as I move away from the opening of the, uh, you know, where the lava is emerging and then get a better, truer transition as it cools and flows um, down the side of wherever I mount it. So that was kind of a cool observation as well. And this texture really affords, um, you know, some of that flexibility in how I paint it. So, uh, you know, one last quick look here, um, if you're really curious. Um, got some nice cracking effect on the surface of the lava. Um, some nice um, texture, you know, up and down. Um, and what I've tried to do is paint it using some angles with the airbrush so that I can preserve the brightest yellows in the core. And then, oh, focus. There we go. And then um, subsequent angles hitting the sides with some of those reds and oranges, um, giving it a, a more of a gradation effect. And uh, I think that has, um, you know, at least technique wise for painting, um, is pretty much spot on where I'd like to be. Um, just for people who might be curious, except for the black, obviously, these are all transparent uh, colors or candy colors. I'm using Createx airbrushing transparent paints. Um, and they're just what I happened to buy initially, and um, that's what I'm going to use. So. Um, anyway, that gives you a look at the lava up close, um, some of the textures, and a little bit of the process of how I've been going about it. So that gives you an idea, and particularly the customer, an idea of where I've been going with the uh, lava. It was um, This is the last sort of big experimental phase for development. Um, I haven't done anything like this before. Um, so, uh, you know, once I've reached this hurdle, bridged it, however you want to say, um, then you'll start getting some uh, video updates on the progress on the carving and the actual construction of the piece. Um, and uh, I have some ideas about how to support the lava in the channel, and um, then I'll have to do some experiments, um, you know, very easy ones though, on um, how many LEDs will be needed and play with those colors a little bit, but I'm not worried about that at, at all at this moment. So. Keep your eye on the channel, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, come back and check those videos out as they emerge, hopefully and relatively soon. And, um, you know, of course, feel free to leave questions and comments down below. And um, for those of you who've stuck with it to the end, I know not everybody does, um, you know, I did get a couple new products, um, this clay, um, of course, the, that rubber, and also a, um, uh, and I got another type of clay from them, another hardness uh, level. And I also got an accelerant for urethane rubber. So if people are interested in me reviewing those products, it's a little bit of a specialty item. Um, but if you'd like me to go through those and uh, you know, a few people comment down below that they'd like that, I'd be willing to shoot a video and talk about those and some of the things I've already learned just using them very quickly. And by the time I shoot that video, I should know more. So, uh, a lot of videos. Well, anyway, thanks for joining me. I do appreciate it. And uh, keep your eye on the channel. I have another new release coming out. I think it's the last one. So uh, stay tuned for that, and I'll talk to you soon.